Rodney's car broke down. It was $2,000 to fix. I looked in the bank account and we weren't getting paid for two weeks. We drained everything that we had um, saved and we didn't have enough money for food or gas. And, um, and that's two full-time working people, you know, have this problem with the car, couldn't afford food and gas we had to borrow from our family. We can't make a, a living, both being teachers. We're in our 30s. You know, we have a, you know, two good jobs, but it's not, not cutting it. So then I said, when that happened, I said, okay, I'm going out and I'm getting a second job. And then he, you know, he coaches two sports already. He's going to coach a third. And so, but I, I don't want to get a second job because I'm angry because I, you know, what more time than I'm away from the kids and, you know, just to give a little bit extra to feel safe and secure if something happened, like. And that's what I, you know, your secure word is one of two things that I have a problem with because the teaching industry is supposed to be about security but their current movement of pushing uh, unqualified teachers out the door is uh, on its way and the first thing they're looking to do is to get rid in, of tenure. In, in tenure which they've already approved on the state and so you don't even have that job you don't even, you don't even have that job security anymore I get it it's just like the corporate world completely understand. We had all this credit card debt, then we still couldn't pay the mortgage. And we tried to get loan modifications, but we were either denied or, um, sorry, we were either denied or it was like, we'll cut your mortgage payment and down by $100, but then tack on nine more years. So no lawn, no lawn, <laughs> loan modification was helping us. And so we, you know, we just put it on the market hoping to short sell it because um, you can't just sell it and take a loss you have to go you have to short sell it uh, fortunately my father owns this house and it was just vacant it was like a blessing in disguise so we're here our house even though we've gotten a few offers the bank won't accept the short sale so our foreclosure date is coming up and it's just depressing I get depressed I can't really Every day I want his light to shine on everything I do or say I want his love to always be my daily guide Every minute I want Jesus by my side. Um, well, um, I'm Mormon, and uh, my family has been um, really strong, strong in the Mormon faith, and that's a lot of where I got my uh, got my inspiration from to do these pieces. Um, I. Um, it's something very important to me, um, and uh, something I believe very strong in, strongly in, and it is something that I feel that I want to do more in the future. The chains um, sort of represent um, burdens or um, 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 traps we get ourselves into as a society or as um, personal, personal traps that we get ourselves into. And uh, the light represents um, the light of Christ. And um, the, the whole concentration was centered around coming towards the light and getting rid of the chains. So part of the symbolism was the chains were trap, traps, snares, um, temptations that we all have 
in our lives. And I really wanted to focus that, it, I really wanted to center it around that if we come to Christ, we will be set free. Mm. Um, Wilfred Woodruff was um, our fourth prophet in our church. Um, he uh, lived during 1808. I think he was, he was born in 1808, I believe, and uh, he died in 1888. Rough, roughly around. Um, he was, he was um, the prophet known for uh, restoring, um, restoring some of the principles um, that we hold in our temple. I actually, developed my pictures to have symbolism that the reader or the person who was looking at the painting to, on, um, to look at it and get their own interpretation as well as my interpretation. How good to know that in my heart is love abides Every minute I want Jesus by my side It's not really been easy. I have uh, was born December 23rd, 1992 at St. Joseph's Hospital, and um, my father wasn't around at the time, so um, my mom, I was about three or four days old, and my mom had, was doing drugs, and she left me at the hospital. And um, so I was there for about a week straight with, with just the nurses, and uh, my grandmother came eventually and got custody of me, and I lived with her from a newborn till I was about three, three and a half, and then she caught Alzheimer's and uh, couldn't take care of me. She was forgetting to feed me and things like that. And once that happened, I moved with um, one of my my cousin's moms, which is one of my tias, and uh, I lived with them for a while. And that's really when it all started because and uh, so I would get beat and um, abused, and I wouldn't say nothing, but um, and my stepmom, my cousin, she would sometimes go out of control too and hit me. And one time I had went to school and uh, my arm was all bruised and, you know, the nurse investigated it and they called CPS. And that same day I went home and uh, my stepdad had slammed me up against the wall and threatened me and stuff like that. And from that point on, I kind of figured keep my mouth shut or it's going to get worse. And I, ha I held all the hate and everything inside. And... Basically, I turned to the streets because, you know, I thought my friends would, uh, basically, when I was with them, I felt comfortable, more comfortable than I did when I was at home. So when I'd, I'd, go, I'd wake up, get dressed, and leave for school, and then come home, drop my stuff off, and leave again, and when I come home, it's like 9, 10 at night, and I'm in, what, 5th, 6th grade doing this? 7th grade, I had seen my first uh, gun, I had went over to Little Bump's house, and he pulled out a 12-gauge shotgun, and he uh, gave it to me. That was the first time I ever... I actually held a gun without somebody watching me, and uh, it was his because he had his, his dad had gave it to him, and uh, that's when my life really changed. I mean, from the moment I had just got jumped in the gang, or the moment I was born, was I really meant to do this? Was what what would have my life would have been different if my mom and dad were still together? If my if my dad didn't die, if my mom wasn't a drug addict and alcoholic, you know, how would have my life had turned out? You know, and I started thinking about it, and then, you know, then the hate came back up, and basically all the emotions got in at once, and then, you know, I was like, I'm going to do something that's, you know, that I, that's better, that betters my life, and not sure, not really sure what that is, I don't know if it's my art, I don't know if it's, you know, my skills in, on cars, I don't know, I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to find something eventually to get me out of, out of where I'm at.